project the distributed wallet so in this course we will be going through a project in which you can do it alone also like before watching the videos or the code walkthrough you can just try it by yourself to check how much you have learned but there's anything you didn't understand or something you are not able to do you can follow the code walkthrough in which i will show you the whole project how it is done and this project has each and every possible bit that we have covered everything in this project so what is this project this is basically a distributed wallet so what does a distributed wallet do it is some kind of a bank like structure only in which you have a wallet out here let's say there are 5 to 6 people for right now so these are the 5 people they can send money to this wallet and they can withdraw money but if this person has deposited 5 rupees or 5 ethers then he can add the max take out only 5 of them not more and if somebody has deposited zero he can't take out anything so each person has some money inside the wallet and he can take out only that money he can withdraw he can send he can do whatever he wants but he can only do it with his money not anybody else's so you can think of it is divided into five portions and everybody is having their share so it's like that so in the smart contract this thing will be extended to as many people as there can be and each account so basically each person is having some money so his account number will be having that money so let's see how it is working actually what can be the possible data structures and all so here each address or a person so this is basically the account address of a person will be mapped to a data structure known as balance which will have firstly his total balance right now this one his total balance at the moment and the payment number the payment number is basically the transaction number and the payment or the transaction number will be mapped to another data structure which will be of the type payment or you can say it as transaction which will keep the amount that how much amount was there in the payment and the time stamp at what time the transaction has taken place so like that so here you can see it's a new data structure known as payment so how will you go about it you can first make a structure a structure of payment a small structure which has some amount maybe of uh, like obviously of int any size you want there will be a time stamp then you will have this as the payment now you will make a mapping a mapping will be from the payment number to the amount time stamp before making the mapping you need to make a data structure known as balance you can make this data structure balance which will have a total balance in uint and a uint for the payment number and a mapping a mapping for this payments so in the mapping the payment number will be mapped to the payments okay so in this you get that all the addresses are mapped to some balances in the balances there are uh data like the total balance the payment number currently going on and the payments now anybody can have this so every address will have it now what about this this is a pause button so what happens when you click this pause button your smart contract will stop so it won't work anymore so 
it is basically you can call it as a bool so when the pause button is false which means it is right now in the play condition the smart contract will run and will execute all the functionalities but when it is true then you know that pause is done like pause is true so the smart contract is paused and nothing of these will work and you should also give this access only to the owner of the smart contract otherwise anybody can just pause it so it should be only given a right from the owner that only the owner can click this button or change its state next we have two functions just to take all the types of function into consideration we have two function one is the get balance this is a view type of function view is basically for reading whatever is there in the blockchain so this get balance will take an address will take some address some account address and it will show the total balance it will show this total balance of that address now next is convert which is a pure function pure function won't do anything with this state and all and it won't take any variables data and anything it will just try to convert the way into ether so what it will do the user can send some way because most of the amounts are uh, given in way so it might be needed for the conversion so it will take an argument as way which the user will send and then it will give out the equivalent value in ether so if you write 10 power 18 way if you give the argument it will give us one ether so like that then you have two main functions which is the send money and the withdraw money so anybody can call the send money and send some money to the smart contract and it will be mapped to his address that how much money he has sent so in this basically you will increment the total balance of whatever the money he has sent you will just increment the total balance you will make a payment number like you will add one to the existing payment number and you will increment it and the new payment number will map to the latest payment its amount the amount he is sending and the timestamp okay so this is basically the payments for the smart contracts getting money next up we have withdraw money withdraw money is a function in which any user can withdraw money so the withdraw money will take the amount of money he or she wants to withdraw and it will firstly decrement it from the total balance it will decrement it from the total balance and then send the money like transfer the money back to the address who wants the withdraw money or who has called the function withdraw money to make it a bit simpler we haven't included the payment for this withdraw money so only payments will be recorded for the incoming money in the smart contract and not the outgoing money we will extend this in the pre in the next classes to get some improvements done then this destroy so this can only be called by the owner so we have the owner who will call this destroy function to destroy this smart contract totally and all the money like each and everybody's money whatever was there will be sent to an address which will be given as an argument to this destroy function so this will destroy the smart contract and it will give all the money to the address which has been given to it by the argument and most importantly this can only be done by the owner so only the owner can call it so that's it for now you try making this project if not possible then you just go through the code walkthrough and you will be done
and also if you make the code yourself you can still review it to get some more features out of here.